So far, we have added the stroke and injection pressure curves. Uh, shown, stroke is shown as the purple curve here, and injection pressure is shown as the red curve here. We've also added a template so that we can see where the process should normally be running. The next thing we're going to look at is what's happening inside the cavity. So let's go ahead and add in a curve. We're going to, we're going to start with the end of cavity curve because this curve really shows us the most about what's happening uh, in terms of what, what's related to part quality. This, this curve tends to correlate very highly with part quality. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can see this a little bit closer. We're going to click and drag. We're now zoomed in from zero to about five seconds. And we can see uh, during the filling process, we've transferred right about here. And this is a decoupled process. So we're not slamming into the end of the cavity. It takes a little more time for the plastic to reach the end of the cavity and begin pressurizing. So we know where the cavity ends up filling by the point where it begins to rapidly pressurize, right about here. So the plastic, if we watch the animation down at the bottom, we can see that during the filling stage, take some time for the flow front to hit the end of the cavity. And once it does hit the end of the cavity, this is where it starts to pressurize the plastic. And we see the packing phase. And we pack to a pressure, uh, we're packing to right around 2,200 uh, PSI, which happens to be where this particular part runs the best. And if you'll notice, oh, and then, then we'll see that uh, as the plastic cools and shrinks away from the cavity, it depressurizes until it reaches zero. So let's look at some of the things that we can, we can see in this curve. The first thing is what we call the cavity fill time, the time it takes to hit the end of the cavity. And you'll notice that we're not quite matching the template, even though the machine is matching perfectly. So let's go ahead and just make a couple uh, adjustments to the, the, the press so we can see the effect on here. We're gonna, I'm going to reduce the shot size. So this will take a cycle before this takes effect. Actually, I'm going to reduce it just a little bit more. Oh, didn't catch it in time. That's OK. Uh, as I reduce the shot size from 61 to 60 millimeters, notice that it takes longer for the flow front to hit the end of the cavity. Why is that? Well, since we reduced the shot size, notice there's a there's a, just a little difference between where the, the, the stroke transferred before and the template. We've transferred just a little bit earlier. That means we have less plastic in the cavity at transfer, so it takes longer for the flow front to then fill, make up and fill the rest of the part. So this cavity fill time is is really important in, in uh, matching uh, surface texture and in making sure that we can properly pack out the part. Because you'll notice that also that because it's taken longer to fill the part, the plastic is cooled a little bit more and we're not even getting as high of a, a, a pressure in the cavity as we once did. So by be because we're matching our fill time, we know our fill speed is set right. We say, hmm, it looks like our shot size or our transfer position's off. Let's adjust this back in now and see if we can match it. I'm going to try 61.5. There we go. On this next cycle, Let's unzoom the curve for a moment. 
We're gonna build our shot. We've built now to 61.5 millimeters. And now we're close matching the cavity fill time much more, more closely. Um, so that's the first thing, that's the, that's the first key step is matching the cavity fill time. The next step is matching the peak pressure. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna change the hold pressure. We will change from 20% pressure to 22%. And on the next cycle, let's see what happens inside the cavity. We'll give this just a moment. What we'll see is our hold pressure has gone up from 5,700 to 6,200 PSI plastic. But the cavity pressure we can see has gone up from 2,000 to 2,500 PSI. Obviously, we're not matching. Question is, does this affect the, the, the quality of the part? Uh, if we have more plastic pressurized inside the cavity, do we have more plastic or less? In this case, because we've pressurized more plastic into the cavity, we've put more material into the cavity, and so the part's a little bit bigger. Let's just grab that part and have a look at it and compare it to our master part. Can we see any difference? No. It's such a small dimensional change that we would never notice it until we tried to take this cover and snap it onto uh, its, its attachment. So we'd notice the part was a little bit bigger. It was a little bit tighter to assemble. So we can actually use the cavity pressure to see changes in dimensions of parts. The other thing we can see, I'm going to make a change on the, I'm going to make a change on the, the process. And let's see what, what happens. And, we'll, and then we'll talk through what we changed. Notice what's happened here. First of all, we can see in the stroke curve and the injection pressure curve that our fill time has changed, but a little, it's a little bit shorter. We've transferred at a position that's much sooner than the template. And what's happened to the pressure inside the cavity? It's almost zero. What do we think that part's gonna look like? What does that mean to have zero pressure at the last point to fill? Well, if there's zero pressure there, that means that there's no plastic there. So this part should be a short shot. And if we pull that out of the press, we can see that in fact, there's a short here. So how is that useful? If we know that zero end of cavity pressure <clears throat> makes a short shot, we can set an alarm in the EDART, say if the peak, peak cavity pressure is below 1,000 PSI, let's send a signal to a part converting conveyor or to a, a part pick, placing robot. And instead of putting that part in the good bin, we can put it in the bad bin. We can essentially automate the inspection of our parts in order to find short shots, parts that are, uh, are too big, too small. We'll try one more change here. First, let's see what happens. Oh, we need to give it one more cycle. This one's a little interesting because we have changed. The transfer position didn't change. We're still transferring early compared to the template. But our hold pressure is much higher. 
we match our cavity fill time, but the pressure's a little higher. In this case, whoops. Oops, that didn't take. Let's try adjusting the transfer position one more time. This will take, I've increased it from 57 back up to 62, where it initially started out. Now we can see we're transferring at the same point. It's matching our template. But what's happening inside the cavity? We're seeing a tremendous amount of pressure, 4,300 PSI. And let's look at the part when it comes out. And you can see that we've got some excess flash. A little difficult to see, but uh, this part here has more flash than we had before. And you can even see it around the runner system. So with the end of cavity curve, we can s let's, let's just review what we can see. We can see, first of all, whether we're the cavity, whether, whether the plastic is hitting the end of cavity at the right time, whether it's, and whether it's uh, packing to the right pressure. And in doing so, we can catch problems like short shots, flash, and even dimensional issues.